What's up makers? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how I made $40,519.16 selling squirrel benches. What the heck is a squirrel bench, you ask? Well, it's this. It is a bench made for a squirrel or other small woodland creatures, and it is designed to be mounted to a uh, post or a tree or whatever, and then you put food, apple, etc., 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 on top. You may have seen an article just like I did uh, back in early 2020, maybe late 2019, where this guy, you know, during the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, had built this squirrel bench and started selling at local markets online. On online, he was making quite a bit of money on it. So, in this inaugural episode of the Making Things for Money segment of our Make Epic Things YouTube channel, I'm going to be talking about this specific project, uh, how I ended up building it, how much it cost to make, how I marketed it, how I sold it. We're looking at all the technical details because I'm going to just guess if you're watching this video, you probably already have an inclination uh, for making or woodworking and building something like this isn't really too complicated and I probably don't need to tell you how to do it. But what I'm going to teach and talk about in this video really expands beyond just trying to sell a squirrel bench online. It can be used for a variety of things that you as a maker could uh, implement in your own shop, garage, home, whatever, full-time, on the side, whatever. I mean, I'm talking about cutting boards, knickknacks, birdhouses, whatever you could possibly make in low to mid volume. And that's really the key. These are not custom items. I was not making these to order and I was not making them custom. They were going to be essentially making them in bulk, keeping our costs down, keeping production time short, and then shipping as many as we can. So this video is going to be a little bit of a different format. If you follow me over at Crafted Elements, which is one of our companies here at Eden Web Assets, um, we sell silicone molds and wood uh, templates and things like that for resin artists and woodworkers. Um, this is gonna be me going through the nitty gritty kind of technical details, um, which is probably what I think you guys wanna know about because you guys are probably familiar with selling on your own website or selling on Etsy. I wanna do quickly touch base on those topics, but I really want to tell you about how you can utilize Amazon as a small volume maker. So I've got my laptop here with me and I'm going to go through some data. I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at because it's really going to help you understand. First of all, this is a story I actually love to tell, this whole squirrel bench story, because when I tell people that I sold $40,000 worth of cedar squirrel benches that cost me like three or four dollars to build, they don't believe me, but I have the data to back it up. Now most of this video is gonna be you staring at my ugly mug and listening to me talk, but I promise, even though it's not gonna be as engaging as a Mr. Beast video, you're gonna to wanna to watch this because if you are a maker and you're doing this either as a side gig or you're full time, I guarantee the stuff I'm gonna have in this video is going to be uh, valuable to you. I see very, very little makers and small businesses utilizing those different platforms, and I come from a bigger e-commerce background. Um, I don't wanna get into this really because this is not really what the video is about, but just take my word for it that we've sold tens of millions of dollars worth of product online. I've sold a million dollars plus of product on Amazon. And this is not through Craft Developments. This is through a various uh, collection of our business over the last 20 years. 35 different e-commerce businesses in total, actually. So I know a little bit about selling things online. So that's why I'm kind of thinking that you might find some of this information useful and helpful. So. I'm gonna go over to our analytics here in our Shopify store, which is the store I had connected our squirrel bench sales to. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you so we can kind of explain this stuff. So here uh, you see gross sales, that's 35,791 US dollars, and it was 1,043 units. So essentially doing the math works out to about $35 roughly. Uh, a unit we are selling these for. And this is during the period of January 1st to September 1st uh, during 2020. So going back here, we have our gross sales at, again at 35,000, but I want you to look at the top two categories here, uh, Amazon and draft orders. Amazon is amazon.com, so the US Amazon, where we sold 654 of those units, total $21,000. And we have amazon.ca, which is our draft orders where we were manually inputting sales from our amazon.ca account long story i don't want to get into the technical details but there's a reason we did that don't worry about it for now so we had 207 uh, from amazon canada at a total of about 8200 dollars in sales so between amazon.com and amazon.ca that was nearly thirty thousand dollars of that 
initial $36,000 um, net. However, going over here and picking up something a little bit different, this is a screenshot or a recording from our Amazon FBA sales. So what I was showing you in the previous screenshot was Amazon FBM. Oh, psh, hold on, John, just stop. Where do we go? F FBA, FBM, Amazon sale. Okay, let me break this down for you. Amazon FBA is when Amazon holds the product. So you've sent 10, 20, 50 of these to Amazon. You've had your listing on Amazon created. And when you sell, you don't do anything. Amazon grabs it from the shelf, sticks a sticker on it, packages it up, sends it out. That's Amazon FBA. Well, clearly that makes a lot more sense to do, but hold on. A, the fees are higher for that. You're paying your FBA pick and pack fees. Uh, and B, that's really only feasible if you've got a sort of a proven product. I would definitely test with FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant, probably what you're already familiar with. You get an order via your website, via Etsy, via Amazon. You print that order, you go to your warehouse, your shop, your garage, whatever you have, you pack it up, you stick your UPS or USPS label on it and you send it. That's FBM. You can sell on Amazon as an FBM seller or an FBA seller. However, as an FBA seller, there are advantages. As you probably know, searching for Amazon, you almost always want to find something that's Amazon Prime. That Prime is almost always from an FBA sailed, uh, sold item because Amazon knows that they can pull it out of their inventory, package it up, and ship it out really, really quickly. So inherently, uh, if you were had the exact same listing at the exact same price for an FBI, FBA item compared to an FBM item, so if you were competing with another seller, for example, and he did FBA and you did FBM, the guy with the FBA listing is going to sell a heck of a lot more than you do simply because a lot more people are going to see the FBA listing. Uh, Amazon is going to prefer to show them the FBA listing. Um, but I, again, I don't want to get too much into that because I really do want to just establish this as putting in your head that Amazon is a, a very a valuable place that you could possibly list things like this um, and actually make a lot of money doing it. Um, if you do actually want to see really specific information and watch me and watch me walk through creating an Amazon listing as a maker and how I would do that, um, comment below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. I know I'm asking you this early, but the only reason I'm, the only way I'm going to know if you're interested in learning about you know selling on Amazon as a maker or a small volume manufacturer is if you tell me. Otherwise, I'm just guessing. So I want to go back to this uh, screen here. You can see that Amazon revenue here for Amazon.ca FBA, so this is the case where Amazon was actually storing the items and shipping them for me, uh, had a total sales uh, of 5510 so $5,510. Um, everything else is cost of goods sold. Let's ignore that for now. Uh, $5,510 plus that $35,000 from the previous um, Excel shot that we had there, and you um, have seen that's that total of $40,000. All right, Sean, so great. You made $40,000, what did it cost you? How much did you actually come home with? So obviously those were sold in an eight month period. I'm gonna pull up our cost sheet on that. And anybody who's doing this as a business, whether you're a small time maker, doing it on the side, or you're a small volume manufacturer, you need to be keeping account of your costs. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever, that's cool. I know wood costs this and wood glue costs this. But no, I mean like when you're dealing with higher volumes, you know, these were a thousand of these we sold, you really need to know down by the penny what this cost you, how much time it took you to make, how much time it took you to pack. And that's something you're gonna have to kind of learn to do over time. It's not easy, I mean, or rather it's not hard, it is putting it all into an Excel sheet. So if you look at this Excel sheet over here, where I've got our Squirrel Bench product, I've literally listed um, the quantities and the, the components, i.e. the shape of the wood, how, um, how long each piece of those wood needs to be, and what it was in terms of species. So I used, for a mix of these guys, it was a mix of red cedar and white cedar. I inputted my cost per inch, which is basically just, look, you've got an eight foot piece, 96 inches. It cost you 10 bucks. Well, then it's, you know, nine, nine cents or whatever it works out to um, per inch, right? Um, and then you're gonna have a scrap. So 10% scrap, because you obviously have waste when you're dealing with wood, wood products. I know that, you know that. So you're gonna wanna add that in because if you're throwing away half the product, you're half the material you're buying, you need to include that in your cost of goods. So really in total, we ended up with $3.95 Canadian. Uh, I'm in Canada up in here, A. Um, that's like $3 US. So it was $3 US in materials and over here, I have my labor. 
which works out to a total of 6.5 minutes per unit. Sean, how did you make this in 6.5 minutes? Well, I'm glad that you asked, and that comes down to a system, jigs, and processes. If you're making custom stuff, you know that there's nothing you're gonna make that takes you 6.5 minutes, right? Um, but when you're doing this stuff in volume, you really need to plan ahead like you would be uh, running your own assembly line. Not to say that you'd have 10 people working for you, but your own single personal assembly line. So you're gonna have one entire section of time where you're literally just cutting your wood. You're gonna go to your saw, you're gonna cut 10, 100, 500 pieces of wood, all the same size that you need. So in the case of this, I'd cut 100 of these, I'd cut 200 of these, I'd cut 400 legs, and I'd cut uh, 100 of this other component. That would literally give me enough for 100 squirrel benches. But doing that all at the same time on your table saw, jigsaw, whatever you're doing, whatever piece you're making, CNC machine, laser, it doesn't matter, is going to save you time automatically because you're not going from one stage to the other individually. Doing things in bulk saves you time and if you follow me on Crafts Elements, what do I say about time? It's an old adage, time is money, it's really, really true. So when you actually work that out, you can get really analytical with this. I know that I'm gonna make a certain amount of money by selling that squirrel bench. Um, and I have it listed here. When we were selling them again, I don't sell these anymore. So, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. saying to copy this idea. Feel free to copy it if you want, I could care less. Um, or come up with something else yourself. But when we were selling these on our website for 29 bucks, you know, we have our, uh, our fees as far as credit card fees. We have ACOS, which is average cost of sales. So we are running ads to this to make sure people would come to our website. Same thing, you'd run ads with your Etsy account, you'd run ads with your Amazon account. So that would leave me a profit of $24 per unit, which is a massive 67% margin. So EHR, this is the magic number. It's so magical that I'm going to zoom in here. EHR is effective hourly rate. How many, uh, for every single unit I'm making, I know I'm gonna make $25 on this, in, the, in this case, right? It only takes me six and a half minutes. So effectively, my effective hourly rate, EHR, is $230. How would you like to make $230 an hour in your shop or in your garage? Maybe you already do, that's great. Some people don't. Um, so that's one of the cool things you can geek out on when you know your cost of goods, your cost of materials, your cost of time. It is so freaking important, I cannot understate it. So the six and a half minute thing, let's go back to that because I happen to have a video, obviously, of my setup, how I was actually making these so quickly. So what I'm gonna do is pull up a screenshot now that I have, can I rotate this? Boom, boom, boom. All right, so on my screen, you should see scroll bench components list and reference. On the right is literally uh, notes and everything, all the pieces that I would actually have in this, in this component attached to a board with sizes. So whether it was me or someone else or Joe Schmo down the street, they could replicate this very easily and feel free to replicate this if you want. Now what's that funky thing in the middle? Ah, glad you asked about the funky thing in the middle. Anybody who's ever done production work probably already knows that that is a jig. It is quite literally a stand that I set up that I can quickly and easily throw all those pieces of wood on, get some wood glue, get my um, pneumatic nailer, and bang, 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 put them all together. And it just so happens that I have a video of me doing that. Let's pull it up now. All right, so again, that's my jig, those are my pieces. This is literally constructed with just wood glue and pneumatic nails. These pieces are all pre-cut. I don't need to show you a video of me cutting them because, well, that's pretty simple. Uh, but you can see this entire manufacturing, manufacturing process uh, going on here. And, uh, you know, by the way, I was also at this time, uh, 2020, 2019, making like kids furniture, um, like outdoor mud kitchens and play tables and stuff like that. So even though I've accounted for those costs of that material, a lot of that material was scrap. That material was stuff that I literally just had uh, hanging around from some of the Cedar Kids products that we were making at the time. So my cost realistically per unit was less because those costs were already included in my cost that I calculated the kids products out to. So again, you can see how that jig helps, right? It's supporting my wood um, and I can flip this around, throw on another piece of uh, the, the other side of the bench, stick that down. And then at the very, very end here, I'm going to attach the tabletop and then the mounting piece. Did you believe I made over a thousand of these with this jig? Oh, don't want to do that again. <laughs> I 
All right, I think you get the idea here, guys. That's the squirrel bench. There's just one more piece that had to go on that, which is this. This is the actual piece I added, which strangely enough, none of the other squirrel bench competitors, if you want to call them that, at the time had anything like that. I just thought this was the easiest way to mount it to a post or a um, or tree. So I added this extra piece. You go over, you mount it to your post, and you just screw it in. You don't have to actually screw through the bench itself. Seemed like a really simple thing. And in fact, apparently it was so innovative that everybody just copied it. So anybody that seems to make scroll benches now have that added. Um, just a really easy and convenient way to mount it. So before you go out and say, oh my God, this squirrel bench thing is a genius idea. I'm gonna be a millionaire. Hold on, when I made this in 2020, there weren't a lot of squirrel bench sellers. In fact, I think I was probably one of the first or second ones on Amazon. So much so that actually I had uh, another person on Amazon. I wanna say copy me, cause this wasn't an original idea. I'm gonna be, <laughs> this is not my original idea. However, they quite literally hijacked my Amazon listing and tried to sell their own under my own listing and we ended up getting them shut down by Amazon. That was a really strange experience. Um, but if you pull up amazon.com today, you'll see looking for a squirrel bench or squirrel picnic bench that there are quite a lot of options. You've got one, this mix idea squirrel feeder table. I would almost guarantee uh, this is $23.99. So, you know, six, $7 less than I was charging for those guys. They have 688 reviews. So I would say that these guys are probably selling, let's pull it up here. Oh, and they even offer it with an umbrella. See the umbrella, that makes a difference. It's the hook. With this, at the time, my hook was, and what got the clicks, was the squirrel sitting on the bench. Seems obvious, yeah, it should show the squirrel sitting on the bench, but I was the only person on Amazon with a picture of a squirrel on the bench. Everybody just had a picture of the bench. So who do you think they clicked on? It was this listing, right? So that kind of comes down to the Amazon marketing, you know, click-through rates and all that stuff, which I can talk about in another video if you guys are interested. Um, but let's go down here. You can see the numerous uh, products for sale. So I'm not really sure going up against these guys with that $24 price point uh, makes a lot of sense. So then why are you watching this video? Sean, you, you, you got us to watch this video. You said we can make $40,000 selling squirrel benches. Well, no, what I'm actually creating here is I wanna put a seed in your head, <laughs> not, not those kind of seeds. I wanna put a seed in your head that there are many, many products um, you could sell and I want you to get beyond the whole like Etsy and, and website based, uh, you know, sales limitations. Selling on Amazon, Amazon is the biggest e-commerce retailer in the world, as you probably know. The people that are going there are going there to buy. They're not going there to, you know, look at today's news or learn about politics. They're ready to buy something. So those are your best kind of customers. And I really do think that utilizing Amazon as a sales channel is important. You can either sell only on Amazon or you can even tie Amazon back to your existing store. Especially if you have a Shopify store, there are plugins for Shopify that will allow you to sync orders between Shopify and Amazon. So you don't even have to worry about like managing multiple storefronts. By the way, this is also for, uh, available for Etsy. You can connect your Shopify store to your Etsy store to your Amazon store at the same time. And as orders come into both those stores, they automatically funnel down to your Shopify store and you fulfill it as if you were fulfilling an order placed on your website. Once you fulfill it, the, the uh, data gets synced back to Shopify or back to uh, Amazon and you don't even have to log into those systems. You don't even have to log into Shopify, log into Etsy. You just get your payment every week or two, depending on how you have your payment set up. So if you think this is kind of too complicated in terms of accounting and managing mar multiple marketplaces, there are systems that you pay obviously per month, not a huge amount of money, but there are systems and apps and things like that in place that you can tie into your existing store to make this entire process really, really easy. So I've been talking a lot about Amazon. You already may be familiar with Etsy. Maybe you've already got listings there. Etsy is still a great place uh, to start out and to, to get your feet wet in the whole making things with volume and advertising game. I really think the one thing that people have to uh, get out of their heads is, you know, trying to start a business or trying to start selling a product like mm -hmm. this and only uh, utilizing free traffic, social media, trying to go viral on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram. Those are all really, really hard to do, take a lot of effort. I honestly, being in this uh, e-commerce game for 25 plus years, I know that you need to pay to play. This is a pay to play game. Now, while we're on that, if you didn't want to try the Amazon thing and you want to say, you know what, I'm familiar with Etsy, maybe I want to try a new product on Etsy and see if it works. Well, there is an easy way to do that and it's not just adding it to your Etsy store. 
Of course, you need to add to your Etsy store. You need to have good photos, good thumbnails, a good description, fast shipping time, and an okay price. However, I wanna talk about Etsy ads. So within your Etsy store, um, I've gone ahead and pulled up one of our Etsy stores for Crafted Elements. And if you, again, are familiar with Crafted Elements, we sell molds and templates and things like that. So um, with this particular Etsy store, I've picked up one particular listing just to show you the example um, of what you can do and kind of sort of expect if you've got something that works. So this is for our 12 by three and a half acrylic wine caddy mold. Um, you can see that we have spent under the spend category here, uh, $25 in ads. And this is something, this is like literally, you know, for like the last six months, like this is not a huge amount of money, but stay with me here. Um, $25 in ads, but that generated $153 in sales or in revenue that we wouldn't have had otherwise. So it doesn't mean we only sold five units during that period, but five of those units, five of those orders are attributed directly to Etsy ads. And this ROAS category is return on ad spend. So we effectively, for every dollar we spend, we made 607 in, in top level. It doesn't necessarily mean profit because only you know what your profit is per unit, but we spent $1 for every $6.07 we had got back. That's a pretty good investment if you've got a decent margin product, something with you know 50, 60% margin like this. <laughs> um, so the same thing would apply on Amazon. Etsy's ads dashboard, I'm not gonna make a video on it. There's a billion videos on YouTube already that you can learn about how to create an Etsy ad and what you need to do. They make it stupid simple. Like, <laughs> I've, been, I've spent millions of dollars on advertising over the years um, for our various businesses. And Etsy is so incredibly limited in a good way. It's really like, if you're kind of new to this, you're an Etsy seller, you're, you know, you're not an internet marketer. Um, it's really easy to get started with Etsy ads. It's like the click of a button and Etsy figures out who's gonna likely buy your product. Any other search uh, engine, um, search engine or, or, or at paid ads platform, you're specifying keywords, you're specifying audience, just get, it's getting really complicated. And Amazon's even complicated as well. Um, so I will talk about the Amazon ad platform if you would like in my Amazon video, if you want to create it. But again, I need to know that you find this kind of content valuable and you want to learn more about making things for Amazon. So coming closer to the end of this video, what did I actually make? It's probably what you wanna know. That's what I'd wanna know. So we talked about that $40,500 being a top line revenue number. We sold uh, 1,043 units off um, our website, Etsy and Amazon FBM. We sold an additional 118 units um, with Amazon FBA. That comes to 1,161 units and they cost with the box, right? With the shipping box, because we did have a shipping box for this, uh, $4.95 each. Uh, Canadian, which means my cost of goods on that $40,500 um, income, which actually most of it's US funds, by the way, um, is $5,700. So the other things we have to consider are the Amazon fees, Etsy fees, and advertising fees. I do not have all that accumulated, um, but I can tell you that Amazon charges typically 15%. Um, which is much, much higher than Etsy. So if you're one of those guys in Etsy who are like, oh my God, Etsy now charges 9%, trust me, 9% is cheap, stop complaining. Um, Amazon's gonna charge you a um, lot more, but again, you have to increase your price to offset that. It's really not the end of the world. You just have to know that before you go and list on Amazon. Um, I would say that once all those fees were kind of accounted for, we're probably that $28,000 level of profit after everything was all said and done. $28,000, and again, this was a total of, uh, what, six and a half minutes times, say, 1,200 units, 7,800 minutes, 130 hours of my time, which is, it's pretty good, pretty good, 130 hours invested, and, uh, you know, $28,000 return. So, again, if you found any of this valuable, let me know. If you want to see how to list products on Amazon FBA or FBM as a maker, let me know, comment below, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of opened your mind to some things that you can create. I do plan on doing a few more videos regardless on making some projects just like this in volume and selling them through Etsy or Amazon just to show you not how easy it is, but how it can be done, how it can still be done, how you can make a full-time or a really good part-time living as a maker making stuff. All right, see you guys later. Thank you.